In this video, we're going to take a look at translating propositional logic statements. We're going to first look at how to translate English sentences into propositional logic. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our statement and identify any atomic propositions, which essentially means I'm going to look at my sentence and look at what would be propositions. So if I go to the store or the movies, I won't do my homework. So to me, I see I go to the store and then I go to the movies and do my homework. So I'm going to let P represent I go to the store. And it's important to understand that there are a lot of correct ways to translate these. This I'm showing you one correct way. So P is I go to the store. Q is I go to the movies. And R is I do my homework. Now it is a good idea. So notice here I'm looking at I won't do my homework. I'm not going to represent R as I won't do my homework. We always represent the proposition as the positive, And then if it's a negative, we just negate it. So the first thing I did now is I looked at my P, Q, and R. And now I want to identify any logical connectives. And remember, those connectives are negations or disjunctions or conjunctions or implications, any of those things that we just got done learning about in our last couple of videos. So what I see is I see an if then, and notice there is no then, but here is where that then would go. I see an or, and I see a negation. So let's take a look at how I might represent this using PQR. Now keep in mind, when you are translating, you need to write this. You need to verify or identify what proposition represents what phrase. So if I go to the store or to the movies, so I'm going to start with go to the store or the movies. That would be go to the store or go to the movies. So I'm saying if I do that, and now I'm going to say this is an if then. So if that occurs, then what happens? Then I won't do my homework. So R is do my homework. So I'm going to say not R. So the way I could translate this is P or Q, if P or Q, then not R. Here are a couple of practice questions for you to try. And before you get started, just keep in mind that there's more than one correct way quite often to write the proposition. So if you don't get the same answer that I get, then that's not necessarily, that doesn't necessarily mean you're wrong. It just means perhaps you went about it in a different way. So for question one specifically, there's a couple of ways that I can think of to do it. And I'm sure there are others as well. Um, I would go ahead at this point and press pause and try this question. And when you're done, press play to see how you did. So for question one, I would do this probably with three propositions. So I would say that P represents I get a free sandwich on Thursday. Oops. Wow, I'm having a real hard time writing today, so I apologize. And I would let Q, so that's get a free sandwich on Thursday. And then only if tells me I've got some proposition there. And then you buy a sandwich, or I'm going to say I, I'm not going to use I and you. So I buy a sandwich and I buy a cup of soup. So this is, again, one way to do this. And using the propositions the way that I've written them out, then we would write, and I'm just going to stick with yellow. So I would say, if I buy a sandwich or a cup of soup, 
So that's Q or R. Then I get a free sandwich Thursday. So this is how I would write that using the uh, propositions that I have come up with. Now, you may argue that we shouldn't include on Thursday here. So I might say that S represents it is Thursday. So if this is the way then that I went about my propositions, then I would say if, well, I'm just gonna start with Thursday. If it is Thursday and I buy a sandwich or a cup of soup, then I get a free sandwich. So see how I did it two different ways. Both are just fine. Um, it's really all in how you assign these, which is why I will always look for how this is assigned. So don't just underline it. I actually want to see you explicitly write it out. Let's take a look at the next one. The automated reply can't be sent when the system is full. So automated reply can be sent would be a proposition. Auto reply can be sent. Q system is full. So now what? The automated reply can't be sent when the system is full. So to me that says if the system is full, then the auto reply can't be sent because P would be auto reply can be sent and then we're saying it can't be when the system is full. So that's an if then, that's an implication. Most of the time when you're doing translating, you will go from English to a propositional logic statement. Um, but just to make sure we're tracking, this is another direction that we could go. So if I give you the propositional statement and I ask you to write it in English. So here I have Q represents you can ride the roller coaster. R represents you are under four feet tall and S represents you are older than 16 years old. And then I've given you R or not S implies not Q. So what might be helpful to do is to say, if R or not S, then not Q. So that might be a way to help you because of course I want to write this as an English statement that makes sense. So now that I've replaced all of those connectives with English words, now I can just pop in the R and the S and the Q and it will make much more sense. So how would I write this? If R, so I'm going to replace R, if you are under four feet tall, or not S, so S is you are older than 16 years old. So I could either say, or you are not older than 16 years old, or I could say you are younger than 16 years old, whichever is fine. If you are under four feet tall, or I'm gonna say younger than 16 years old, and above this I'm just going to put not older so that you remember you could write it either way if you were under four feet tall or younger than 16 years old then not q so q is you can ride the roller coaster then i could say then you cannot ride the roller coaster Easy as that. Now, this little uh, method that I used here, 
you certainly can use that going in the other direction as well. That's not the way that I did it. But if you're struggling a little bit with how to translate, that might be a nice little segue into translating. Up next, we're going to take a look at solving logic puzzles.